Hi everyone. Let's see if we can get this right. We've got new equipment everywhere. All right. Today's episode is our tiny home and we're live, right? So we may have a couple of issues. We're learning how to use different equipment and different things. And at the end, when we go live, we're going to show you, well, we are live. At the end, we're going to show you the live view of our tiny home, right? Okay, so today's episode is about our tiny home. And the first thing I want you to know, because I'm a teacher, I'm always going to try to teach you something, is that homes are a metaphor in our lives for our lives. So if you think about, just going into this for a minute, that your home represents you. If you're describing your home, you're likely describing yourself. So I'm gonna tell you a lot about myself and my own transition by explaining why I went from a 6,700 square foot house last year to this tiny home. And we've got 950 square feet. We have six of us living in it. And my office and studio is inside it. So I'm gonna show you how we make all that work. But let's start with the story behind it and the why first. Now, if you're listening to this on the podcast, you're going to miss the tour of the home at the end because how can you see it on a podcast? I can describe it, but you can't see it. If you want to see it or if you're watching this live and you want to replay it or you want my notes on this, including the little tips for you in your life and how to make your home in line with your own personality, go to controlthefuture.tech forward slash tiny dash home. So it's controlthefuture.tech forward slash tiny dash home. Okay, that's where this episode lives. You can also go to my website and just look for it on the podcast. Now, I'm a single mom with three kids. And today, two of my kids have a birthday. And they have a birthday together on the same day because they're twins. (laughs) They're the icing on my cake. They're my little precious girl twins, Lily and Gracie. So shout out to Lily and Gracie. Hi, happy birthday, you guys. Happy being five years old. Little joy of my life. And I want to say hi to Hunter, too. He's my six-year-old, and he's my favorite. Now, in our family, we have a tradition (laughs) where we call all of our kids and our grandkids our favorite. (laughs) So don't feel like my other kids are going to worry about that but they all feel special when I call them that. Now, my son Christian also lives with me, and you know him if you've contacted me. He helps me with a lot of things. He answers your emails. He helps with technical stuff, and he helps with social media. And in a minute, he's going to be on the tour of the house. We're going to show you the background of the studio and the rest of the house and how we organize it and how we live. Why am I in a tiny house? Last year, or just go back a couple years ago, I'm living in a 6,700 square foot gated mansion. It was a very, very big house with a lot of unnecessary space and a lot of unnecessary rooms. Now, having the best of the best is nice. I'm not saying it wasn't nice. It was so nice. I had plenty of space for everything that I wanted any material possession I could ask for was in this house and we had I had my own office space there were lots of beautiful things about this house it had a pool with a waterfall one acre nicely landscaped backyard but with all of that nice space and all those beautiful things came a ton of work imagine having twins, twin newborns, and if you are a mom of a multiple or a dad of a multiple, high five, because you know it's not easy, and I had a one-year-old at the time taking care (laughs) of this huge house, a pool with six pumps, all the landscaping. I had a pool guy. I had a maintenance guy to come fix the waterfall and the pumps. There was always something to fix on this house, and cleaning it 
was ridiculous, right? So there was so much work involved in this house. And it literally took, I would say, 35 hours a week to maintain this house. And we're not even talking about the financial resources that go into a house of this size. And I'm not just talking about the mortgage payment, but the utilities and things like that. And last year, last January, when I decided to get a divorce and move out, if you think about anyone who's getting a divorce, maybe this isn't true for everyone, but this was true for me. I got a divorce from a lot of things. I was ready for a new step in my life and it didn't include all the material possessions and taking care of everything and it didn't include all the time and money going to things that I didn't think were reflecting my own value system. So I moved my family into a tiny home <laughs> 950 square feet and our tiny home is actually an apartment they're called apartment homes and I chose this one because they look like a little house and they're really cool inside and everyone has their own style and you may not like my style and that's fine but you might be curious about the backstory here and how you can make this work for you basically what I did is I made room in my life financially and resource wise as far as my time and my energy to create something new. And now in my tiny house, I don't have any maintenance. <laughs> I have a maintenance guy. I had a maintenance guy here for a year. His name was Jose and I'm like, you are my BFF. I'm gonna get to know you and he was and he was great. But I don't have to maintain, the only thing I have to do is change light bulbs. If my refrigerator breaks, I don't have to fix it washing machine I don't have to replace it the time I save every month or let's just go weekly the time I save weekly now in this tiny home is like 35 hours a week I don't have to fix anything there's no lawn and so I save a ton of time there not to mention the finances and the finances aren't just about the maintenance on a big home but because our space is so small and for those of you who've embraced a more minimalistic lifestyle. The thing about a small space is everything has to have a function and there's not room for extra junk. Junk, So you're not spending a lot of extra money on things you don't need. And that feels really, really good. It just feels very clean. It feels very organized. And it feels like I'm using all my resources to build my business, to spend time with my family, to take care of my health, and to take care of my primary relationships. And there's nothing more important to me at this time in my life than doing that. Do I think I'll always live in a 950 square foot tiny home? I might personally, but my kids are gonna get bigger and they're gonna want more space probably. And that's okay. Really, nothing's forever in life. You may be a, one of the fortunate ones that have lived in the same house forever, but moving is part of life. One of the changes I wanted to talk about as this metaphor for our lives is I live in the Woodlands, Texas. The Woodlands is a very affluent suburb, Northwest Houston and it's very beautiful and i kept the beauty i kept the good schools and i kept um the nice restaurants and things like that that are a beautiful part of the woodlands but what i did what i did is i moved to a more diverse part of the woodlands i wanted my kids to really have more experiences where before we had a gated home and when we went into our home, those gates closed and you couldn't get in. And we had privacy landscaping all the way around and we did have a beautiful pool. But what we have now is we have a community pool and my kids get to see their classmates and they walk across the parking lot and see their friends from school. And they get to be exposed to so many more cultures and it's not just about materialism. Now, if you live in a nice house, and who knows, I might live in a house that size again. I'm not saying I won't. Um, and there's many things you like about it, and maybe you need the privacy. There's times we all need different things. But for me, 
having my kids exposed to so much more is where we are right now. And one other thing I want to tell you about our tiny home and why I love it so much for my kids is Martha Beck does an analogy, look her up sometime, she does an analogy of transitions in our life and how it's like a caterpillar and how we go into a cocoon and we dissolve and then we reemerge a butterfly. And there was something in me that needed our family to be close and cozy during this time. I wouldn't call it a time of healing, but it was a time of regathering and regrouping and refocusing. And we've really, really enjoyed this close time that we've been able to have. So those are some reasons why we chose a family home. I'm gonna give you a tour of it and show you how we actually live, how we organize and how our living space is organized. And let me see, I think there's one thing else I wanted to say in my notes. Nope, that's it. <laughs> okay, if you're listening on the podcast, go to controlthefuture.tech forward slash tiny dash house, or sorry, tiny dash home, and you can see this tour. For those of your, for those of you who are staying live right now, give us a second because Christian's going to come in. We're going to disconnect a few things, and then we're going to take this, which is actually a Mac laptop. It's Christian's. I have one too. And we're going to walk around the house and show you everything. You want to come over here and disconnect us, Christian? Hey, can you still hear me? Are you ready? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, this right Say hi. Hi. That was his like armpit and his shoulder. <laughs> <laughs> okay, here's a tour of the tiny house. Standing up. Okay. Okay, this behind the scenes right here is my mattress. Why is it here? Because when you do a podcast in particular, you need a lot of sound buffer or softening of the sound. So that's what we do. Let me show you this right here. I'm going to give you the, the tour of this, the background here. What these pictures are is because you see them all the time. You see them all the time. So this is just a little beautiful uh, map of Napa. I biked through it one time. This is a little poster from, I've written about him before, my secret boyfriend. Of course, there's the Tammy Green that you see behind me so you know who I am. And this beautiful masterpiece is some of my kids' and grandkids' hands. Right? Isn't that sweet? And then love lives here. You've probably seen that. Okay, let me grab this real quick and I'm going to show you. Okay, this is what you don't see. Okay, there's a pillow for more sound. There's blankets and stuff here. We kind of rearrange this every day. And then here are the lights. We have a lot of lights behind, behind me while I'm lying. Here you go. And the reason we do that is so I don't look like this. <laughs> so you can actually see me. Okay, the light's going to be weird. Okay. All right, a little bit more of a tour. This is a painting my grandma did <laughs> that I love. Now, turning around, if you look back into this room, you can see the whole thing. It's this tiny little room. That mattress over there is my bed. <laughs> so what we do is... After this breaks down on Mondays, or sometimes Tuesdays if I have a class, that mattress goes on the floor and I sleep on the mattress. I had forever in here a king-size bed that I brought from my big home and it didn't work for me anymore. Okay, I'm gonna show you the kids' room. Here it is. Welcome to our tiny home room for the kids. This is how three kids live. Bunk beds for two. Other bed for one. We have a lot of secret treasures. Tiny little home. One closet for all of them. There's Christian. Hi, Christian. <laughs> and a wardrobe. And a wardrobe. See how we manage? The thing about a tiny home I want you to know is that there's no room for anything extra. We have everything organized. But here's a great thing. It's so there's so little to clean. There's like nothing. 
to clean. And these little closets that you see are so easy to organize because there's nothing we don't need. Okay, here's our hall. Look at this big, this is our like foyer. There's like nothing in it, front door. <laughs> okay, here's our living room. So here's our tiny living room, again, 950 square feet. So that couch right there that you can't really see because of the light is also Christian's bed. <laughs> and then we took our dining room. See what I did for my kids? We took out the table, and that's helping my little kids learn their letters and their words, right? With a nice outdoor area, which really helps with outdoor living. And then here is our tiny kitchen. It's so tiny. It's tiny, tiny. And we still do a lot of cooking and a lot of baking in this tiny kitchen. The one thing that we have out, appliance-wise, all the time is that. <laughs> Coffee. I don't own a toaster. Why do I not own a toaster? Because there's no room for it. I use a cookie sheet. It's just like really doubling up on stuff like that. So there's our tiny ham. Oh, where do the kids eat? Right there. Right at the bar. That's how we do it, folks. <laughs> Kristen trying to get out of the picture. All right. There's our tiny home. Thanks for joining us on our little tour. Email us at team at controlthefuture.tech if you want to have any more insight into how we manage and how we make this work. And remember, your home is a reflection of who you are and where you are with your life. So think about that and see how you can use that little tidbit to do some insight into your own personality and what you want. All right, you want to let us go? <laughs> Goodbye.